Alright guys, how's it going? So today, I'm going to look at the Laser Slicer add-on. And I'm going to kind of put my own spin on it. Now, in all honesty, this add-on's actually created for a laser cutter. But we can utilise some of the options that it gives. So in traditional fashion, let's delete this cube. And I'll use my go-to object, which is always a skull. Now I'll select the object, install the add-on like any other add-on and I'll press N to bring up the properties and you can see it here in the tab, laser slicer panel. Let me just move this so you get a better view. So we're presented with a few different options, line thickness, the width, cutting settings, DPI, things like this. So you can see down in the bottom here, number of slices, 894. That's way too high for what I'm needing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the line thickness up and I'll make it something like 45 millimeters. So that gives me a number of slices of 40, so maybe we'll drop it down to, let's say, 35. So that's 51 slices. Now one thing you can do is you can actually go to the scene settings and you can change the unit scales. That actually gives you more slices or less depending on how much you play with the unit scale. But we're going to leave everything on default for now. Now the DPI, I'm not using a laser cutter, so I'm not interested in it. Same with the thickness of pixels, I'll leave that at 1. The cutting space, I'll leave that at 1 as well and I'll just hit slice the object. Now depending on how complex the mesh is, how many slices you have, it could take several seconds. So here we go. So what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to hide the skull and you can see here the mesh that it's left behind. So the next thing I'll do is I'll quickly convert this into a curve. So I'll come to object, convert, curve from mesh to text. And you can now see that it gives us some object data. So I can go into the geometry tab and I can do a slight bevel. Nothing much. So 0 0.01, so we get this really nice slice effect. Now check out another tutorial that I made, I'll put the link up in the top right. And it kind of uses a different process, but this is actually a much quicker method. So we could really finish the tutorial here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the object and I'm going to convert it back into a mesh. I'm going to come to the modifier tab and we'll probably just use the wave modifier. <laughs> Now I need a little bit more control, so I'm going to add in an empty, so I'll go to add, do an empty, and we'll just do something like plane axis. I'll select the object again, and you can see the starting position, I'm going to select that and make it the empty. Now you can see the empty is now controlling the displacement, so I can put the height up or down. So I can play around with some of these settings, and I can start to make it a little bit uneven. So I can hit apply in the wave modifier, and if I really want to take it up a level, I could probably add a displacement. So we'll come to the displace modifier, now this is way too much, so I'll put the strength down ever so slightly. So I can bring the mid-level up, I can change the direction, and I'm going to make this on the z-axis so it's only up and down. And I'm going to make a new texture map, and what I can do here is show textures in the textures tab, go to new, and we can make it something like clouds. And you can start to see here, just by playing around with some of the displacement settings, we can get a different effect. So we can get something like this. So that's pretty much the Laser Slicer add-on, it's available free, I'll put the link in the description down below. Do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, you know what to do. Peace.